I'm back with the legendary political consultant, campaign manager, Paul Manafort. Paul, we're talking about your new book, uh, Political Prisoner. And um, you did some consulting for the former president of Ukraine, this guy named Yank, um, Yankovic. And what the government tried to do and was uh, was leaking to the media was that somehow you were an asset, not of Ukraine, but of Vladimir Putin. Uh, Putin. So to walk us through the way, the twisted way in which a narrative can catch facts that are even on the opposite side of the narrative, but incorporate them into the narrative. Yeah, my work in Ukraine was, as I said, I elected several governments there, the last one being the Yanukovych presidency. And all of the work was focused on getting Ukraine into Europe, very publicly. I was working with the U.S. Embassy, the German Embassy. I was going back and forth to Brussels. Uh, and, and I was the visible face linking the work that Ukraine was doing to, to comport its laws and its economics pro, uh, uh, policies to European standards. Um, so there was no doubt where I st stood in Ukraine, and there was no doubt that, that Putin was 100% against Yanukovych bringing Ukraine into Europe and threatened Yanukovych, uh, which is why Yanukovych had to take a pause, which led to you know, the civil unrest in Ukraine, when when he was about to sign the the what they call trade association agreement, Putin said publicly, "If you sign that, I will stop day that, that next day all the trade with Ukraine, which is seventy percent of Ukraine's foreign trade." Um, so Yanukovych didn't say he wouldn't sign it, but he said he needed to pause and, and start work with the Europeans to try and work a bridge, kind of sort of blown out, to help him get over that what was going to be a big gap. All of this is public information. There was no doubt that Putin was fighting everything I was doing there. So to then say I was the link from Trump to Putin would be like I was say, saying that I was the link from the Trump campaign to Hillary Clinton. It could have been the same thing. Uh, and, and so it just, uh, but it didn't matter because the way Weissman and the special counsel handles all these things, they just layer publicly these lies and put it into the system anonymously. Interestingly, to the same reporters who are now getting these anonymous uh, you know, uh, leaks from the DOJ on the Marlago raid. Uh, literally the same reporters were the ones getting the leaks on me in 2017 and 18. Paul, uh, I also noticed as I look through the case uh, that a very familiar tactic emerges, which I, I have some experience with, but most people not aware of. And that is what the government will do is they will layer on charges, money laundering, bank fraud, because, hey, you took your money out of your bank account, mail fraud. Yeah, because you put something in the mail and, and it makes it seem like you're this master criminal. But the real goal is to is to bludgeon you into taking a plea. So they don't even have to prove their case in trial, whether you're innocent or, or or guilty makes no difference. Uh, you succumb to their will and you essentially plead guilty even perhaps to something you didn't even do. So talk about how that process plays out because that's what led to your conviction and then of course later in 2020 your pardon. Yeah, I, I mean, remember the Trump campaign was from 2015 to 2016. I got involved in February of 2016. All of my fair violations that I was indicted on under the Russian uh, collusion uh, investigation by Mueller occurred, according to Weisman, in 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, way before Trump was a candidate, way before I was ever you know, thinking of being for Trump. And then on top of the fair uh, charge that they they invited me on, they put forfeiture uh, and money laundering charges in, So and they tried to reach back 25 years of my life for all assets and money that I'd earned anywhere in the world. So this narrow period of time, a Russian collusion in the Trump campaign in 2016, ended up encompassing my whole life, over 25 years uh, in business. Uh, and on matters that had nothing to do with Ukraine, not, I mean, nothing to do with Trump, nothing to do with Russia. And when I challenged Weissman with a motion saying that special counsel was way out of bounds on his jurisdiction because he had a very limited mandate, um, they, they ignored it. And what that led them to doing a, a secret letter from Rod Rosenstein, the deputy uh, attorney general, to Mueller, expanding his investigation to anything he wanted on me. Why? How do you justify that? You can't justify that. This is not an independent counsel. 
This was a special counsel which has the authority of just the U.S. attorney, not what the old independent counsel law did, which gave him unfettered authority, which Congress, both Democrats and Republicans, disagreed with and therefore didn't renew the independent counsel law. Well, with me, it, it, they kept it secret. They, they said that they, they, they didn't ever tell us why uh, Mueller was coming after me. And they expanded it into a full-fledged investigation. And again, on charges that, frankly, either I had resolved or they just made up. I mean, the really striking thing is that if you did not have an association with Trump, it's really obvious none of this would have happened to you. So they went back into your past and tried to figure out, find things to get you on. And that's obvious. Folks, this is all in the book. It's called Political Prisoner by Paul Manafort. Uh, Paul, thanks very much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Dinesh, thank you for the time. Good to see you.